Hello viewers, we're back again with the Dell Latitude D830. We're going to attempt to install Windows 7 this time. I have my USB drive connected which had the the um, installer on there, but I've copied some files to it since then, so I'm not sure if that would have messed it up. Yeah, it looks like it messed it up. Okay, I'm going to have to remake the drive. Okay, I just recreated the installer and I'm just realizing this has a CD player. I could have just done it with the CD or I think the DVD. It is, oh well. Okay, let's try again. Well, this is just as well. It still probably would go faster. It only took less than two minutes to make the thing because it's USB 3 on the computer upstairs. And um, this will install so quickly this way, it probably would take even less time with this, even making it, than it would to use the CD. So it's just as well. It'll be interesting to see what transpires with the drivers on this. I don't know if, if Windows 7 will have any for this. I'm going to guess no, but it's possible that it may. So we're going to go into this unallocated space. And that should install fine. We should get a dual selection. Here we go. Windows XP, Windows 7. We're in luck, it has drivers. I had a slight suspicion that it may. So we can always do that later. Oh, here we go, it's got the Ethernet that way. I don't think it has a display driver though. Which is fine, that's easy enough to download. In fact, I suspect Windows Update will probably pull that in by itself. Let's see how bad we're looking here. Huh, not too bad. Well, it's not, a, not the correct driver, but it got a driver for everything. 
so it'll at least work in the time being. So we should be able to put this up to a more res usable resolution. Won't have no arrow, but at least we can work with stuff on the screen. Alright, so the first thing we got to do is get the... Get the uh, Windows Update Agent put on here, so that it will fetch the updates. Jeez. I gotta get that new camera in. I had to have the tripod so crooked that it's uh, gonna fall over. Okay. Now that everything is connected, let's take a look. So what we need is the Windows Update Agent. Let's get this drive off of there. Don't need that anymore. Okay, so we'll install this. And this should make the updates work again. So I first I turn this to never because sometimes it'll it'll hang up on itself if it's doing it automatically and then it won't check because it thinks it's checking twice. So I set it to never check, we'll do a restart and I'll do a manual check when it comes back on. Okay, so now let's go here, the window update, and let's check for updates. And there's the updates. So I'll take this computer upstairs, I'll push the updates through tonight, and then I'll pick up on the video again tomorrow, back down here. Okay, we're back again. Updates ran all night last night, I've been pushing them through this morning. And most of them are done. There's still going to be a few trickling in over time. You know, as I turn the machine on and off over the next couple of days. But for the most part, they're done. Now, that is not the end of the story here. While the installation of the Windows 7 was generally pretty painless compared to what it took to get the Windows XP working, there was a little bit of an oddity. Because when I went to activate the Windows 7, wasn't working it it was given a strange response it kept saying activation failed and there was an error code which I had never seen before I haven't really ever seen that window before it wasn't like the same window you get if your product key is no good it was something else and so I went to activate windows you know you go in here and you go under uh, or you could just search for, you know, you could activate windows. And I click on there and you get the activation window. And normally it says, it says uh, invalid product key, use the phone system or retype your key. And that's normal. I don't quite understand that because it'll say that before you've typed in the key. But that's normal. And so it wasn't doing that. It just said invalid product or, or in errors. It was given some weird error. And so it wouldn't give me the option to use the phone system or to change the code, which I wanted the option to change the code because I hadn't typed it in at this time yet. So I went into the control panel and I went into system and at the bottom on the right side there's usually a link to change the product key and that link was there. So I clicked it and it just brought up that same window that gave the error. It would not let me change the code. So I had to go in and out of there a couple of times and eventually that link started operating normally and I could type in a new code. But there's definitely something odd going on with this computer surrounding the activation because the activation is not working correctly under Windows XP. or uh, It seems like it's activated. It's not functioning the way I would expect it to. 
and it's not functioning the way I would expect it to under 7 either. It's activated now, so we should be okay, but it definitely wasn't right. Let's see if we can get on the network here. It only has 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is kind of funny because I think the other one that I have, the 630, has only 10100 Ethernet, but it's it's 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and this one is only 2 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and has a gigabit Ethernet. I guess over the two, I would take the Ethernet. So let's take a look at the specifications here. It's a little bit lower than I thought it was going to be. It's only a 3.3. So it's a Core 2 T7250 at 2 gigahertz and it's 3 gigabytes in memory which is not a lot for a 64-bit system but I find you can get away with that smaller number of memory as long as you have a solid state drive in there which we do in this case. Now I have a lot of respect for these Core 2 processors. I think they're highly underrated. A lot of people seem to think that they're obsolete but I, I really don't think they are. They really can handle with ease pretty much any task before like intensive video editing or playing games or whatever. So for the typical home use case, these are totally adequate. Let's take a look at this in greater detail. So there's a couple numbers I'm surprised by here. The aero graphics are lower than I thought they would be. I think on my other machine, the 630, it's like a 4 point something or even a 5. And let's see, the drive is awfully low too. I don't know why it's only 6.2. That must be a function of the SATA controller because I've used these drives in quite a few different machines and they're usually 7.6 or 7.7. .7. So I'm not sure why this is so much lower. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It seems to run just fine. You know, the programs open up okay and it works so it's installed I need to clean everything the screen is kinda dirty and the keyboards kinda dirty so I'm gonna physically clean it off and then this will be ready to be used I gotta put some more um, software on here that I want to use um, normally I I don't put on automatic but I've noticed that there's a couple of updates that seem to hang Of course, they're not there right now, but one of the other things that was kind of odd about this is it keeps pulling up a bunch of language packs in the updates, the optional updates, like 25 or 30 different languages, which I don't usually see in there, and I certainly have no use for that. So I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't install those automatically. There's a couple of security updates, I believe, that will fail to install manually and I found if you set it to automatic, it'll get them through somehow, but it won't go manually. So I'll set it to automatic and I'll let the rest of the updates trickle in for the next couple of days. Because they tend to come in through small groups, you know, seven or eight, two or three, uh, when you get towards the end. So I'll let that do that as I turn it on and off. And um, that'll be it. This is ready to be put into service. Only other thing I may do to it is I may replace the battery. You know, if the battery lasts half an hour, good enough. But uh, it's got to at least last a little bit. I'm always quick to replace the batteries in the phones, but the computers I'm a little bit leery of because they're, they're all um, lithium batteries. And while they do exist, perfectly good third-party replacement batteries, a lot of them are not perfectly good and you gotta be careful with the ones that you buy because some of them are kinda flaky. I think on this one the battery is it's located on the on the front here. This is the battery. And if you get the extended version, it, it like sits up here. Which I never particularly liked. I'd much rather to extend out the back. I don't know why they designed it that way. But the battery seems to be okay. It's not given any health warnings. 
usually it would say the battery needs to be replaced or whatever if it was really low and it hasn't dropped down to 99 yet so I think the battery may be just fine in this there it goes 99 56 minutes for something like this I think that's good enough I don't know we'll see I gotta use it and then I'll probably do another video on this once I've used it for a while